guys <clears throat> so there's Evelette she's a curious little girl delay is back there behind the eventual nest box Evelette's probably about to go into one of her hides I almost feel like, though, she doesn't like it when I see her go into a hide, if that makes sense. She is filling out nicely. She's been eating really well. We actually were considering taking her out and putting her into this cage that we've been getting ready. Uh, obviously it's not ready yet, but we were considering putting her in there uh, just to keep them separate so we could monitor her eating. However, she started eating really well. We saw her. Um, I saw her eating dubias. So guys, we uh, have some work to do today. Just wanted to bring you along. I haven't done a video in days because I've been sick. I'm still a little sick. You could probably hear it in my voice, but doing a little better. So I've got just some some snakes to weigh. I gotta feed, uh, fill up the food bowl for the monitors. Uh, Caleb's mostly been taking care of the black tree monitors, and we've got the new blue tree monitors in here with us in the snake room, the main snake room, I should say. But uh, yeah, so I gotta give them some more roaches, spray them down. Uh, already fed little blue. He's doing great. I'm probably gonna start filming a little bit of Little Blue's progress uh, because he's letting me touch him and even pick him up now which for him is a big deal <laughs> uh, he I just put on the gloves he seems a little more afraid of my bare hands and I don't like getting scratched up anyway so I put on the, the gloves I reach in I just pat him usually under the neck and chin uh, and then I just kind of slide my hand down his chest to, and I, he lets me pick him up so that's awesome progress I'll start trying to show some of that on film but yeah, uh, I just wanted to bring you along in today's snake work and lizard work. Uh, so let me pull out the glass bowl that we keep the roaches in inside there. I try and put in enough roaches that uh, I only have to refill the bowl every two days. They go through a lot. I mean, I'm putting in 40 roaches probably, uh, and usually halfway through the second day, they're gone. Right, so they're eating a lot of roaches, and I've I've uh, tested it, made sure that the roaches can't climb out. It's a glass bowl, so they they get no purchase with their little feet, and dubias aren't very good climbers anyways, which is a nice thing about them. So yeah, let's get to it. I'll fill up that bowl and uh, start weighing snakes. And other monitor news, we have officially declared that Little Blue is a male. So finally, after I don't know what it's been nine months we can uh, come up with a name, an official name for Little Blue. And, of course, we could have come up with one before, but just knowing his gender um, was kind of what we were waiting for, to give him a name, and after it dragged on for months and months and months, we were finally like, you know what, let's just name him. But then, uh, before we could come up with one, he has been scent marking. Uh, basically, we don't position the cages where the monitors can see each other, but he can certainly smell them, right? <clears throat> and uh, he can smell that there's another male blue tree monitor here. And so Little Blue has been everting a hemipene fully, I mean, it's like, it's like that long, and rubbing it around on his cage, which does not seem very comfortable to me, but that's what he's been doing, and he's clearly a male, so that's good to know. Uh, we can now find him a partner that is female, and we'll be in good shape. Yeah, so that's exciting, though. Um, I'm happy to have discovered that with certainty uh, so thank you for any name suggestions you guys might send 
Uh, we did end up using, uh, I think it was Lydia in the comments, suggested uh, a couple of names. We used one of them. So the black tree monitors, uh, Caleb came up with Jet for the male, and the female he's going to call Ash, which was one of your suggestions. So thank you, Lydia. Uh, we used one of your names. I think we've actually used several of your names in the past. So um, anyway, uh, let's get to it. I'm going to fill up their little bowl there with dubia roaches. And uh, they've been absolutely plowing through dubia roaches. I try to put in enough for two days of eating, but sometimes they clean me out after one day and i got to put in more. But I've been putting in 40 or more dubia roaches into their bowl. So uh, they really eat. They really eat. The black tree monitors, as the seller warned us, seem to want bigger prey items because these guys are just eating small little dubias, you know, the size of a, of a quarter maybe. But uh, it seems like the black tree monitors want big things. So adult dubias, um, my little, you know, mice. Uh, we're trying to mostly do insects because that's what we are. Our understanding is that the tree monitors need mostly insects as their staple of their diet. So that's what we're trying to do. But we've given them a little bit of, you know, uh, cooked egg, uh, some mice. And they have eaten some dubias, but they seem to like, you know, they want big ones. <laughs> They're pretty much adults, so of course they can handle bigger food items. So that's what we're going to try and do for them is just up our number of dubias so we can afford to give them more adult dubias. We can also start breeding things like... Uh, hornworms, or we could even order online, you know, locusts and things. Uh, I wish we could do uh, their more natural diet, like stick insects and uh, katydids and things like that, but apparently those are illegal to ship. So uh, unless we can go find some outside, which obviously right now it's winter, we can't, um, we will not be able to do that, so that's too bad. But we'll find, we'll figure out a good way to get them healthy food that's, you know, their natural diet and... Uh, yeah, so let's get to it. That guy's wings messed up. Look at that. Poor guy. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for a certain size. I know it's, it's full of roaches. You might be like, why aren't you grabbing them? I'm looking for a particular size. Too small and it just seems like a waste. But, uh... Ones that get big enough, I try and spare so that they can become new breeders for us. So Now these monitors could absolutely handle bigger insects than this. But since they're accepting these little ones, I just am giving them lots of small dubias. And they are doing great for us. One of the nice things about feeding these tree monitors, if they cannot swallow um, a particular prey item, a bug or a mouse or whatever, they seem to just rip it up into smaller pieces and then swallow the pieces. So I'm much, oops, dropped it, dang it. I'm much less worried about getting absolutely perfect sized uh, feeders in there because they kind of handle it themselves, which is really nice. All right. This tub is being slightly overworked. We're not producing quite as many roaches in this tub as we're pulling from it. So we've got a couple other tubs that we've started up that we'll take over from and give this one a bit of a rest. I'll let them repopulate. Sixty-four, two thousand and sixteen. This is another Ultramel. 
sister to that one, and she is starting to glow. 1861. Our final Het Ultramel. This is actually the mother of those other two. Proven many times. 2199. Beautiful. She looks like she might lay again. This would be like her fourth year in a row or something. Oh ho ho ho! Check this out, guys. We have an ovulation. All right. Look how bloated she is. Do you see that? I hope you can see that. Look from right here to right here. Almost doubles in size. That's fantastic. This is our banana cinnamon. 2082. This will be her first year laying for us. She's locked up many times, so we're not concerned too much about slugs or anything like that. What a great sight. Very exciting clutch. I just forgot what number I said, so I'm going to have to go back in the footage so I can actually write that down. Very good size on her. 2778. Fantastic. Doesn't look maybe quite as big, but pretty good size as well. 2207. Beautiful. I'm going to pause from the weighings for a second uh, to tell you something. I have a confession to make. Uh, that last snake I just pulled out, a het pied, that is about 500 grams lighter than the other het pied, is eating rats. The snake before that, exact same age, same everything, is eating mice and is 500 grams bigger. Conventional wisdom that uh, is preached to us from the biggest breeders in the trade says you must switch to rats, you must switch to rats, you must switch to rats. A snake eating rats is going to grow faster than a snake eating mice. It's bigger meals, blah, blah, blah. You know what? That's baloney. We give our a couple snakes, our mousers, they call them, snakes that just haven't switched to rats very well or at all in some cases, uh, and they get mice because they got to eat. Well, guess what? We just give them a lot of mice. <laughs> of course, they need more mice than they would need rats, but as long as you give them the volume that they need, they do fine, right? She's 500 grams bigger than her sister, same age, but she's eating mice, and it's not fat. You you saw her body condition, I think. She's not fat. She just looks good, is healthy, ready to go, hopefully will lay us a beautiful clutch, right? So if you have a snake that is on mice and won't switch to rats, do not despair. Just give it mice. And of course there's techniques that uh, people use to switch them over. So if, if it's that important to you, go ahead and do that. But to us... You know, we breed our own mice. They're a lot cheaper for us than the rats. So until we move and start breeding our own rats, we're not going to worry about it too much. Back to the grind. This is Monique, our cinnamon. 1878. Big, beautiful, normal. In my opinion, one of the most beautiful snakes we have here at the reptile barn. Absolutely love this girl. She'll never go anywhere. Thirty-four fifty-nine. Beautiful. Here's T. Switty, lavender albino female, deep in shed. She is sixteen ninety-three. That's spectacular. Here is Storm. She's a desert ghost, produced here at the reptile barn. So this is a hold back. Twenty-six sixty-three. I think that said. Excuse me. Yeah, twenty-six sixty-three. So. I've got a lot of these to do. I won't bore you with every single snake that I need to weigh today. But uh, very, very happy with the weights we're getting. Um, the first vent, the first uh, ovulation of the season. Very excited for that clutch. Uh, Shayla, again, is a banana cinnamon. And she was bred by a banana uh, green pastel. Banana lace blackback, right? So the possible outcomes there are variable but the one we're hoping for right the one in 16 odds are a super banana gargoyle and the gargoyle being green pastel cinnamon right very very cool combination i've never seen that particular combination before don't know if it's ever been done very excited um so that's where we're at uh, 
Got a indigo snake here eyeing my toes. Thinks she's going to eat them, but she's in her cage, so she can't. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we are take, we're starting to weigh them fanatically now because we want to know what their weight is when they stop eating. We want to know what their true maximum weight for the season is, right? Um, they eat all year long. They bulk up, they bulk up, they bulk up. It's kind of hard sometimes to get an exact weight because uh, they always have some sort of food in them. But uh, when they go off of feed, we wait till they poop and then we weigh. And to us, that's kind of their true weight, right? And then they don't eat, they don't eat, they don't eat. Then they lay eggs eventually, lose a bunch of weight. That's their minimum weight, okay? And since we have a lot of females going off of feed right now, this is when we are most needing to weigh snakes so that we can make sure that uh, we know exactly how much they weigh. So that the next year, right, when we go to breed our snakes, any females that have not reached a certain weight based on last year's weight, we don't breed, right? Some females can breed every single year. They eat like pigs all year long. Uh, they breed well into, the, they, they eat rather well into the breeding season. Never have a problem putting their weight back on and they lay eggs almost every single year. Other females, it's just not the case biologically. They're not able to do that for some reason. Um, but uh, we need to track it so that we don't continuously wear down a female. You know, if she's 3,000 grams at her peak weight one year and then the next year she only hits 2,800 grams and we breed her again and then the next year she only hits 26. Well, this was a snake that was really supposed to be 3,000 grams. We are taking it out of her each year. That's not good. That's going to cause long-term damage. Uh, sometimes they get bone disease because if they're putting that many resources in that they really can't afford, sometimes the calcium for the eggshells comes out of their own bones. It's just not good to, to breed your snakes if they're not able to support that level of energy output. So that's why we weigh. Um, we don't have fancy ultrasound machines yet, but... Uh, we do what we can to be as professional as we can so these snakes are safe, right? They are our business, but they're also our pets. And we love them, and we do not want them to get hurt. We have been lucky enough at the reptile barn. We have never lost an adult animal, ever. Um, and of course, we will. I mean, everything gets old at least, right, and dies. But so far, we have never lost an animal other than, you know, eggs and uh, hatchlings that barely hatched and died within, you know, minutes of hatching. But other than that, here in our place, we've never had to, you know, dispose of an animal. They just, they've all been real healthy and we've been lucky that way, but we also have been meticulous in our husbandry. And so uh, that's why we're doing this. That's why I'm going to continue today to weigh a bunch of snakes. Hopefully uh, all the weights look as good as the ones we already did because I'm very happy with the weights we just took. So thank you for coming along with us. I'm sorry about my nasally voice because I'm sick, uh, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, we're the Reptile Barn.